That's good. Oh, I got this stuff on my neck. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Dave Brown. This is my wife, Frankie. Uh, we are going to share our ideas about Carl Jung and the archetypes of evil and how we can use that structure to help us kind of take away or balance that beast within us. Instead of making it a literal beast outside ourselves and sort of defer responsibility, we want to challenge ourselves to be able to try to face that beast within us. And Frankie has a couple poems that you'd like to read on the topic. Thank you very much for explaining the shadow this darkness within us that we hide and the hiding of the darkness, which I now call the beast, destroys us. So here's my poem. Healing Hatred. Hatred. Righteously justified, burying it deeper and deeper in the darkness to hide my demon. Now I see rage, so dark, dense, covered with illusion. Father's rape, mother's emotional tauntings, beatings, diagnosing me with mental illness, continuous family, terror, terror, terror pushed into the darkness to not see my own rage and hatred, to maintain illusion of loving family and good life. Dense darkness stopping up my energy like a backed up sewer, poisoning the love and beauty I could be. Toxic waste of constipated emotion taking youthful beauty and rapidly eroding physical body away. Mother suffocated in, in her hatred. Father's rage ate his bones away in cancer. I now see my own darkness to bring the darkness into the light of awareness. Toxic buried emotions seen Emotional wounds now healing, scraped clean, cauterized, and brought into the light of awareness. This is not an easy process. This is extremely painful for you to see your darkness and accept your darkness and clean away the pain of the darkness that you see. It's been an extremely painful process. So don't think in any way that this is an easy journey, but it's necessary to see your shadow as Carl Jung told us, to see it, otherwise it will kill you. Yeah, and I also think it's like, important not to it, it seems easy to just sort of look at the archetype and then take it literal and say that this beast exists outside of yourself in that way that but to me that just means you're not willing to face what's within you and the reason Frankie was fine or trying to express the difficulty is because you really do have to face it, except that it is your darkness, that it is your beast. And you can use all the archetypes and Jungian uh, ideas, but that's only to help you identify the darkness within you. You know, they're just tools. They're not to be taken literally, where you decide, okay, the beast is this kind of creature and he lives in a faraway place we'll call hell, um, that isn't useful. That, that actually displaces your responsibility and your, the possibility of you 
achieving some kind of health. So I think it's important to not get sucked into the imagery and make it literal somehow. Is that kind of how you? Yes. Uh, um, as we've only allotted five minutes to our initial coming together to do this, I wanted to finish with what I was told today or what I came to today about um, the beast because I was having a really difficult time integrating, balancing the, the ugliness that I carry with the love and light that I am. And I'm to balance those two, and I thought, how, how the hell am I doing this? So I woke up this morning, and here's what I have to share from this morning. I am, I am in right relationship with myself, balance, loving and accepting all parts of self beauty in all that I am, darkness supporting light, light supporting darkness, conflict gone, all for one, one for all, beauty in darkness, beauty in light. In right relationship, there is no darkness, there is no light, it just is. Acceptance, acceptance, and loving self does away with the internal conflict, does away with the pain and the suffering. And that's what I had to share from this morning. Thank you. Yeah, and that's real hope. And it's real healing. It isn't displaced responsibility. It's... It's genuine, well, energetic balancing between those things that you would consider evil, for lack of a better word, and those things that you consider good. And uh, whatever it is about our nature that kind of splits us in two, uh, at least there is some suggestion that the beast is not is out of balance it is it is more dominant and i think that can be reflected in a lot of our politics our social awareness our understanding and our, our reaction to things around the world and without somehow coming to some real acceptance that okay the part of the imbalance is the imbalance with me and it's just all seemingly connected to all the imbalance of everyone else. I, so. I wanted to share that. Um, it's very good. Thank no, you. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> that without darkness, we would have died. Darkness has, our darkness is our survival. The yeah. darkness comes when someone's going to shoot me. You know, I'll go and I'll shoot him first. You know, that's my darkness. I will kill. I will kill before I am killed. Right. And that's an important understanding that, yes, we have darkness, but it isn't bad. And to call it evil probably isn't helpful. But to let the darkness just dominate your life, then that's a problem. And it's a problem not only for you, but for other people. You can't constantly live in fear and hatred because that's just not good for you. And it, it, it certainly doesn't help you, you know, try to live in a cooperative society. So you really do have to come to balance. But Frankie's right. I mean, 